all right what is going on youtube another series from the round of 32 is the second round of hidden cup four qualifiers this time overtaken the player that massively surprised mood with his aggressive play style in the previous one versus dark one of the rising stars of the game a very very young and talented russian player um, we are going to have huns and lithuanians as the global bands of the two players mayans mongols chinese britons spanish saracens will be available for overtaken as he lost Celts to a snipe and uh, dark has Italians, Portuguese, Malay, Japanese, Byzantines, and Aztecs available lost Vikings to a snipe. I don't know what he was planning, but he basically went for all the possible water sieves. With the exception of Saracens, I guess... Yeah, he was having the last pick. I feel like if Saracens wasn't picked by Overtaker, he might have picked uh, Saracens himself. I have no idea what he wants to do, but he actually put a massive effort into grabbing all the possible water sieves that are available in the game. Anyways, here are the map picks. Slopes uh, and Cross are going to be Overtaken's home maps. Islands and Bay will be Dark's home maps. So it seems like to me that Dark wants to make sure that Overtaken isn't really having a chance on Islands. Other, other than that, I don't really see the reason of actually trying to pick all the possible water sieves in the game. There isn't really even a single scout sieve in this one. All of these are archer sieves as well. And so... Uh, we are gonna go into game number one over here so overtaken versus dark not sure what to expect from this series because it was already sort of an upset that overtaken has surprised modri in the previous one dark will be playing as uh, aztecs in green on the left and to the north of him it's gonna be overtaken playing as a standard chinese civilization so both players are actually very very close to each other so much so that look at this this is actually the secondary stone of uh, Dark, and this one is the one for Overtaken. It's going to be funny that the players will not actually expect um, each other to be this close, but for a player like Overtaken, who likes to play with very aggressive strategies early on, a map like this could be a dream, because he can really go aggressive with a such uh, close proximity of uh, his opponent, especially because that gold mine over there is really exposed for Dark. The berries are also sort of on the front. It's not really a well-defendable base for Dark, especially because if you go here, you're actually right next to your opponent. That's probably overtaken is going to be like, hey, what's this? I don't think that he expected his opponent to be here, and if you take a look at Dark scouting, he's just about to find his opponent. So both of these players actually got surprised by the fact that the opponent was this close, as we do have uh, what is this going to be a minute arms opening from Dark. With such close proximity, it is definitely worth considering, uh, as we are going to have a free villagers building at the barracks for Overtaken. He will be walled on the left side, but you might have noticed that Overtaken has walled out all his gold and stone. Um, not going to lie, his base is also pretty bad, to be honest, so both of these players actually got screwed over by map generation over here, but at least the map is sort of even, because both players are struggling quite a lot defending their base. Anyways, it is apparently a scouts build from uh, Overtaken, which isn't really going to be that much efficient over here, because the players are so close to each other, that the mobility advantage isn't going to show that much. Instead, we're going to have the men at arms uh, coming in here, and they will try running past TC. Or are we even going to have Manatarms upgrade here for Dark? Yes, we will. Um, those militias were out quite early compared to the fact that they are actually planned to be Manatarms. So now the idea for Dark is that he wants to sort of knock down that stable or force the opponent to repair. And that's actually a good idea. Because you don't want to lose that stable early on if you're um, overtaken. So what you do is you have to repair it, but that costs you a lot of wood. So I wouldn't even be surprised to see a Spearman coming in after Mantarms upgrade from Dark, and that is uh, completely something I can justify. However, you have to keep in mind that the base of Dark is wide open from the left, so it's not like he's just gonna um, camp behind his walls back at home. And indeed, Overtaken is gonna send the scouts forward, and honestly, it seems like Dark isn't expecting this. Be because he doesn't have a defensive Spearman whatsoever, and he wasn't walled by then. This is a very, very easy Voyager kill over here from Overtaken. And keep in mind that while Dark is, yeah, knocking down that stable, it's not actually doing immediate damage, whereas this one does. Now there's a defensive Spearman, and Overtaken tries to finish off that will, will not actually be able to kill that will, that was a little bit sloppy. I feel like if he doesn't want to block, just try to commit to that, he could have actually yoing that will. Tries to go for gold miners, that's a nice find, as he is uh, having a bit of a trouble surrounding those vultures. Spearman comes in here to help out. Now you have to repair that... Uh, stable as there is going to be a range coming in here from uh, overtaken he's doing a nice job harassing voyagers and the next wave of scouts could actually do a lot of damage to these guys so yeah sure 
There wasn't a single Voyager killed. However, a lot of these Voyagers are very, very weak, and when the next group of scouts arrive, and that was a little bit sloppy from Overtaken, now Moldri... <laughs> Moldri? It's, it's no more Moldri now, Overtaken eliminated him, but you see that uh, Dark is now running in multiple spinner in here because he knows that um, those scouts are going to be really annoying and while he's not doing any damage to Overtaken's base, he's actually taking quite a lot in terms of idle time and in terms of potentially losing Voyagers. Many of those Voyagers that will be around are low HP. So far it's a nice job from Dark to protect the Voyagers that are low HP, so he most of them are close to the TC. There isn't really any low HP villas out there. In the meanwhile, we're going to have one Archer coming in here. It's Skirm actually from Overtaken. Obviously it's a skirm because he doesn't have access to gold, which is something that we still need to keep in mind. So unlike um, Dark, who actually still has a relatively safe eco, even though scouts are running around it. As that's gonna be a failed quick wall, tries to go for the Voyager, but there is too many spearmen. Overtaken actually is doing an excellent job um, having a good macro behind his scout control. So that's something that you have to keep in mind here. He's got 28 seconds of TC out of time with Chinese, which is very, very nice at this stage of the game. And um, simultaneously, he's having a very, very nice control over those scouts. Okay. Running around, barely taking any that hits from the spearmen. And in the meanwhile, he's idling a lot of the Dark Seeker, whereas Dark... Eventually, he's gonna get picked off by the skirms. It's gonna take forever for those skirms to kill the man at arms because they deal one damage per shot. Ideal would be if there was an archer from Overtaken, but that's just a distant dream. Uh, anyways, this kind of feels like a man at arms into archers play from Dark, but we haven't seen a single archer so far as um, Overtaken wants to isolate the Voyager, and that is going to be the first Voyager casualty of the game. Eventually trades off one scout to a Voyager, but that's still an acceptable loss at this point, especially if those scouts are able to yoink a couple of low HP Voyagers, like for example this lady. Uh, I think they are going for her, that was a little bit for overcommitment from Overtaken. Um, run into the Spearman. Still, there could be a chance for him to kill it, and now Overtaken once again has to repair that stable, which is going to cost him quite a lot of wood. It's actually pretty expensive to repair these stables over time. Still, the fact that he managed to pick off one Voyager is actually going to be nice for him overall. He also has Horse Color on his farms, plus he has the Chinese farming, so I think his eco is actually better than his opponent's eco is. And we'll see if he's actually able to try and snipe that low HP Voyager. Not sure if he's playing with health bars turned on, but going for this will would have actually indicated that he does. I don't think that he's actually able to kill a full HP Voyager, in fact there is very little chance, but one thing that he could actually try to play for is maybe trying to yoink one of these low okay. HP ones around. He keeps scouting to see what his opponent is up to, and look at this, Castle Age on the way first for Overtaken. Eventually, um, Dark is getting there as well, in fact he's not that much behind, if he had a slightly better eco balance he would also be going up already. The question is what units are gonna be played here. I think that this map actually favors the player that reaches Castle Age very, very fast. And I'm surprised that Overtaken is playing Standard. He was playing full aggro versus Modri last week. Now he's playing Standard and he's doing it well. So, for a player that is relatively unknown, in fact, extremely unknown in the competitive scene, um, this is actually pretty nice uh, execution overall. And as I said, this close vicinity of the opponent actually favors the player reaching Castle Age first. Because what's going to happen is that... Um, you are going to get a couple of knights out and go for immediate siege workshop. It seems like Overtaken isn't really committing to crossbowmen, although you could have made a case for potentially making a couple of archers and trying to upgrade them to crossbows. But he probably felt like, hey, my opponent is going to go for uh, eagles anyways, so I might as well go for um, my knights. And I think that is the right decision here. Indeed, Triple Brax Eagles is the name of the game for Dark. And as much as the close proximity of... Uh, Dark actually helps her overtake him with the early castle push. That also could backfire when those uh, eagles actually start gaining ground. Potentially supported by monks. Because the ego monk play is gonna be what is really dangerous for overtaken. So I think overtaken needs a knight. Then a forward siege workshop here and then has to start pushing this side right away. You could also make a case for a siege workshop here. Because that way you could potentially try to threaten that gold mine. It looks like overtaken is bringing in the knights. But there is no forward voyager. In fact he's adding TC number 2 right now. Playing a little, even TC number 3. That TC is going to be on the stone, and I would assume that you are going to start working towards a castle early on here. So you probably spend at least 3 or 4 of your voyagers to start mining stone early. Because a castle, for example, on this hill, whoever gets it up, it's going to be extremely important for um, both of these players. Still, okay. the fact that there is no forward siege workshop will mean that these knights won't really accomplish much, and that buys time for Dark to get himself up to Castle Age. Um, you get a couple of monks out, and that's actually a misplay, I think, from Overtaken. He's playing this one safer, 
But I feel like when you're so close to your opponent, especially if your opponent is Aztec and he could flood you with Ego soon, you could be punished for playing safe very, very easily. The alternative, as I said, is that you're actually working towards the castle. It seems like we are going to see free TC as well from Dark here. Although he is working towards triple bracks egos as well. We'll see if he's actually going to keep producing on all those bracks. But uh, Knight's trying to get in there. Dark repairs coming in at the last second. And that wall is going to stay up. Right now Overtaken trying to use that scout um, behind the wall to try and pick off some vultures. And the skirmishers aren't focusing the vultures here. That's a little bit sloppy from... Uh, Overtaken and now the Eagles pop out. The Knights do have plus one defense and the Bloodlines Eagles have a plus one defense only as Husbandry is coming in quite early, interestingly for Overtaken. You wonder if that's really necessary for him right now instead of potentially going for uh, Forging here. So I feel like speed is a secondary thing right now. Um, the Just the pure strength of the Knights will be more important when you're actually trying to battle what is going to be an Eagle Flood eventually. There is the Monastery coming in. I think the Ark is slowly taking over in terms of controlling this game. He's behind by six Voyagers, sure, but he doesn't have... Actually, that's a lot more Voyagers. What happened here? Wheelbarrow? No Wheelbarrow. And Dark is also behind by eight wheels. He was later to Castlate, sure, and uh, he's up against Chinese, which also um, kind of changes the Voyager relations, so to say. And he was also probably later to free TCs, but that is a pretty big lead. That's an 11 Voyagers lead if you combine everything. Now, that could soon change because, as I said, Aztec Eagles are pretty scary when you give them time to mess them. And Triple Brax is very, very easy for the Aztecs to mess Eagles on. And in the meanwhile, those Knights don't really have good upgrades. So, Eagles can still be scary here, especially if they have some Spearman support. They don't even need Pikemen, they just need a couple of Spearmen so that they get some extra damage output. And they can just run past TCs and run straight into your eco. so this is dangerous. For Overtaken, he's a very, very steady flow of Knights coming onto the field, because suddenly he could find himself getting overrun by Eagles. Uh, something that many, many players who played versus Aztecs have experienced. Anyways, uh, here come the Eagles, and indeed... There is Voyagers being added to Storm from Overtaken, so eventually he will try to get a castle up for himself. An alternative would be a castle over here, as he's trying to leave all the Eagles uh, break in over here. Monk already coming out, get a couple of conversions on the Knights. Monk could also try denying this rewalling attempt. In the meanwhile, we also have uh, Knights bashing their way through this wall. Nice rewall from Dark, as uh, it seems like we are getting Fletching in. For overtaken that's an interesting decision and did i mention that eagles can just run past tcs yes they can and now you have a lot of idle time for overtaken uh as uh, i feel like the biggest problem that he's facing is that he's getting outnumbered pretty significantly when it comes to uh, military numbers you have to be very careful with the aztec triple brax play because that is extremely dangerous um aztecs already produce units faster those night uh, those egos are just very very good at raiding your eco and once they start raiding like this your eco is gonna fall apart and soon i think we're going to see uh, overtaken getting overtaken in uh voyager count here is the big fight as i said those knights had kind of little upgrades on them it's still plus one plus one at least it's plus one plus one now so you should be able to edge out victory but that was eight Voyagers killed by Dark. Definitely not something that Overtaken wanted for himself. And now he only has a free Voyagers lead and a rather messy eco. Still, at the end of the day, it is 12 Knights against only six Egos. And there isn't really a lot of Monks on the field. Instead, we're going to see a Pikeman switch. Which normally could be problematic because um, the Pikemen are much slower than the Knights. However, in this case... The players are so close to each other that the knight or a pikeman switch is actually completely legitimate. Overtaken is already exploring the map as he is uh, going for uh, multiple relics in here. He already has one relic in, goes for a second one. And soon we'll try to get a third one as well. Now sees the pikeman so he will soon have to react. And it is much harder for him to actually mix in something that is both reasonable against eagles and uh, pikeman as well. One knight gets converted, that's a full HP now the knight as well. So that's a um, huge... Huge win over there for uh, Dark. And that's a double Siege Workshop play now. That is um, a tiny bit unexpected. So not just one Siege Workshop, double Siege Workshop. You have to ask the question if you're able to produce on both of those because that's uh, always a concern in this case. 
And also, I feel like Overtaken, as I said, he's got the army numbers right now. His opponent is sitting behind his walls. This will be the time for Overtaken to be dropping a castle somewhere around over here. Or here. And then starting to add Chukonu, because Chukonu would melt the pikemen and probably destroy the eagles as well. Unless the eagles massively outnumber them. So if Overtaken had like two or three more vultures on stone right now, he would be able to capitalize on this map position quite nicely. So here come the pikemen as Overtaken wants to convert that knight back and is going to succeed. Um, there is nothing in these siege workshops right now, so... This might be, once again, a disaster for Overtaken as he's taking the hill. And he is going to be able to deal with the majority of the pikes on this hill, but this is definitely not an efficient fight for him, that's for sure. And it's easier for his opponent to now start flooding eagles once again after the knight numbers have uh, been lowered considerably. Knight's trying to snipe down the monks, that actually is nice value for Overtaken there, takes down two free monks... But at the end of the day, now it's 16 army against 9, and there is going to be Sanctity coming in here for Rasta cleared for 50 HP monks. More stables for Overtaken, so he really wants to just flood the map with knights now. But I feel like, once again, this push is coming in too late, and why two siege workshops? I have no idea, because you aren't able to afford making units on one, let alone two. And now, you are in a tough position that you just don't have anything that uh, actually counters the flood of eagles and pikemen at the same time, especially once those pikemen actually started grabbing upgrades. In fact, forging is coming in, those will be plus one, plus two pikemen. And Doric doesn't have any siege though to support this one, that's something to keep in mind. That, um, it's a stream of pikemen, sure, but, um, <clears throat> the thing is that Dark could also make a castle here to defend himself, that's a forward siege workshop. Ideal spot for Dark or for Overtaken, for a castle would be on this hill where the siege workshop is, but I just feel like he can't actually make it. Overtaken now has a lot of Voyagers on stone, so he definitely is thinking about the castle, and once he gets to Chukonus, um, he's gonna be able to have a nice little edge over this one, TC taking down the pikemen, but that's not enough, it's way too many pikemen now, and uh, you really have to start asking questions for Overtaken, especially husbandry is one thing I didn't like. Really, do you need husbandry before the plus one attack upgrade? I know that plus one is now in, but that husbandry could have been spent on something else. Potentially, pile up a bit more gold and get for plus two attack or so. You're not really getting anything from husbandry here, to be honest. Obviously, a bit of mobility helps, but now I feel like you are actually going to see why Aztecs is just so, so dangerous. The flood of egos and pikemen, at the same time, especially when your opponent is this close, is going to be very dangerous. And now Dark is adding Voyagers to stone as uh, Overtaken is getting pushed back more and more into his base. Here comes the castle that has to go up. If this castle doesn't go up, I think this is game over for Dark. And I'm really unsure if that's actually going to go up. Because there's egos around. If there was only pikemen, uh, I think the castle would go up. But uh, with egos around, they would just poke down the Voyagers. There's a battering ram already over there. Monk gets sniped down before uh, getting conversion. And I think the castle should go up, but at this point, now it's a 17 Voyagers for Overtake, or for um, Dark. And his eco is good enough to think about Imperial Age. So what you would probably do is think about the castle maybe on this hill. And then go for traps. Overtaken has to go for Chukonus here. That's his only hope. And even then it's going to be tough because, as I said, the condition that Chukonus need to beat the Eagles is that they can be outnumbered massively, otherwise the Eagles would just surround and kill them because Chukunus aren't really um, good at surviving, they're more about damage dealing unit type. Um, there's actually reason of upgrades on this guy, although they are obviously missing Ballistic Stun Ring. So here it comes, Dark gets um, plus 2 attack before he is heading to Imperial. A little bit unbalanced deco, but he's gonna have no trouble going up. And uh, he will soon drop a castle himself now. The thing is that um, Overtaken is actually taking over in uh, terms of military quality, and that should be able to secure him a ground over here, and with the help of Scorpions, with the help of uh, Chukonu and Knights, you could really make a case for a forward castle here, even though, as I said, his opponent is going into Imperial and he does not. Um, another defensive castle comes in here, but he's still 10 on stone. And his resources aren't looking that bad for going into Imperial, but still, he's gonna get beaten pretty considerably into Imp. It looks like we will have a bunch of outposts over here trying to see what the opponent is up to. Knight versus Knight, and that is gonna be a Knight cleanup, I believe. 
I, will, I think whoever wins, it doesn't really matter because this is gonna be a low HP knight even if Overtaken wins. So the vultures can kill it. Although there's still 15 HP on this knight, so it could kill a couple of vultures if Dark isn't paying attention. Ego's pikeman now coming in as well. The knights have plus one, plus two. The pikeman and the egos are fully upgraded, but it's still knights against mostly egos. So Overtaken is actually, once again, taking over in this game, I believe. The problem that he's facing is that his opponent is Imperial, although Dark doesn't have a castle, which means that he won't be able to trap immediately, whereas his opponent already has two. And as I said, this might be the moment where you really consider a forward castle for Overtaken. It's somewhat sloppy that he's not, still not balancing his equal and going up to Imperial. It seems like he doesn't have a market. Um, he was going for University Ballistics, but he could have been up to Imperial like half a minute ago, and that would have been a considerable advantage. There is the castle I was suggesting for... Um, Overtaken, Counter Castle comes in, and honestly, the Chukonus could actually try delaying that castle as much as possible. This is gonna be an interesting castle fight. 30 seconds away, if that castle gets stopped, Dark is in trouble because he's not gonna have traps. And there is a lot of Chukonu. Everybody knows how important these castles are. Chukonu's trying to delay, so I think uh, Dark's castle is likely going up, or is it? I think both castles go up, which means that this is gonna turn into a petard race. It has to turn into a petard race. Um, Dark is an Imperial. But the fact that the castle of the opponent is so close to his own castle actually makes that trap push very hard. Because he wanted to trap from this hill, and his opponent's castle is in his face. And that means that uh, he's unable to trap this castle down easily here, and the two canoes will actually garrison inside the castle. It's so, sort of a mistake from Overtaken that he's not actually making petards. He needs to make petards here, make free petards, and then damage that castle, or maybe try making more and just knocking it down. But you see that... Like, Dark is actually gonna have to trap this castle from potentially what's gonna be downhills. And uh, in the meanwhile, Chukun are coming in. Overtaken is coming back in this one. And Eagle Warriors are nice. But Chukun is actually melt Eagle still. Because uh, they fire multiple projectiles. So, this is still not going to be perfect. And those Eagles will be missing Garland Wars for a long, long time. And so, the first trap is just being set up. I don't know why Overtaken is not making. Um, um, but Ards, because he could definitely kill that castle relatively easily. So, that's a lot of Chukonu, though, and that's something that I'm gonna give to Overtaken here. Ego Raid coming in here. One of the things that Chukonu will not have over Eagles is mobility, which could be very, very troublesome. Let's see if Overtaken was that off before the Eagles could flood into his Eco even deeper. Imperial Age is in, so Overtaken's gonna have to start getting a few traps out. Uh, and also that's a lot of egos. Once again, you don't want egos surrounding your Chukonu by any means. Also, Bracer is uh, non-existent for Overtaken. He's a little low on gold, and it seems like he doesn't have a market to balance out his eco with, because he's constantly struggling with eco balance issues, and like Bracer needs to come in soon, because the egos are now flooding really, really fast, and that's one castle down already. I don't understand why Overtaken didn't go for uh, the Petards play. He could have made a couple of Petards and then killed that castle. Uh, in the meanwhile, we have another castle drop coming in here, but that feels, seems like it's gonna be a failure, because Dark is going to spot that with the Eagles, and he can just stop that, there is Bracer, but it is 51 army against 19, and you need castles to produce your army, whereas your opponent is able to make it on his barracks, and, uh, indeed, if the Eagles come back here, this could be something that gets stopped, although I feel like it's a little too late now for, uh, Dark. Is it? Uh, it's, it's going up. That is going up. Or... Yeah, it's going up. That That's a that's a proper Doubt Castle. Over there. Still, however, you have to keep in mind that Overtaken is 135 population against opponent full pop cap. And this castle goes down way too easily for Overtaken. He's trying to tech switch into Cavalier. But I don't think that he has the time. He's up against 42 Eagles. Soon to be more. And those guys don't even have Garland Wars. But they will soon grab that one as well for himself. And no, it's, it's Light Cap. No, no, no. Light Cap, don't stop the Eagles here. I feel like Overtaken should have been able to destroy that castle um, with the Petards. And then it could have been a different thing. But now he's getting overrun by Eagles and the Dark takes game number one. It won a game that was very, very, very swingy. So, in many instances, it seemed like um, one of the players was very close to winning. But it still went into an Imperial Age scenario. And, um, as I said, I don't know what these double siege workshop play was, but it really didn't, um, show anything for us. There was, like, two scorpions inside one of the workshops, and that was it. So, I'm not sure what the plan here for Overtaken was. As I said, I feel like if he goes for stone a little earlier, he would have had the advantage over the Eagles. 
long enough to drop a castle here and start adding early true canoes. And then that would have been much, much harder for Dark to stop. I feel like he went on stone a little too late, although it's always easy um, to say this from the caster's perspective. Anyways, Overtaken loses Chinese over here, and Aztecs are gone for Dark. Which means that we're going to Slopes or Cross, which is going to be the first home map for Overtaken. He played well in this one, surprisingly well, in fact. And uh, we are going to play Slopes. Alright, let's uh, jump into the next game over here. So, welcome to Slopes. As we are going to have... Uh, Dark playing as Japanese in green, something that we haven't seen a lot in this map, but I feel like it's a very underrated Civ pick. The cheaper lumber camps for these small wood lines, the cheaper mills for the hunt, um, the good man at arms opening, all of these combine. I think Japanese is one of the better civs on this map, and we haven't seen it very frequently so far. Britons is something that we've seen much more, in fact, on this map. I guess the idea is that you get a nice little advantage from the um, herbivores in terms of food eco, and you also are going to have faster working ranges, which helps you a little bit when it comes to, like, feudal age fights, but I'm personally not a big fan of uh, Britons over here. In fact, I massively prefer Japanese over Britons. Both of these civilizations are somewhat one-sided in their late game. Both of those are archer-focused, but Japanese have uh, a decent enough skirmisher play to be able to deal with Britons if this game goes very, very long, but usually this game is much, much faster than normal. Anyways, Four on um, wood for dark, and uh, with those villagers moving out to drop two houses, I think this might even be a pre mill rush. Nope, it's going to be just a mill coming up uh, on the outside. It seems like uh, Overtaken is not actually going for uh, the mill on the outside. Instead, he wants to go for the pre mill rush strategy over here. And I'm not 100% sure if he has seen these villagers just yet. It's also weird that J dark is actually using... Um, hunt here instead of shorefish because the shorefish is actually better at the beginning of the game so that actually legit surprises me and here comes overtaken with the drush something that may actually catch um dark off guard although truth being told overtaken didn't actually check as he runs into the tc fire with his scout so he didn't actually check if his opponent is on the outside on the pond and it seems like he might be moving to the left here which makes me really wonder if he was actually scouting this part and this part this would be a nice idea a premium rush trying to, you know, push away the villagers from the shorefish. It seems like um, Overtaken is going to just play standard back at home. So berries, full wall is what he's doing. And uh, he's going to trade one scout to one villager over here. Now Dark tries to trap those uh, militias over there for uh, some added damage. And so quick wars are now coming in Dark actually fails with the quick wall and that rush actually accomplishes a lot here i feel like dark's game plan is actually better on this map so i like the japanese pick like moving out to hunt the boss and hurt the or shorefish a lot it seems like it's a man at arms towers play now based on what we're seeing few legs on the way but uh, that's minus uh, one villager from dark i'm surprised he didn't lose a second one because he was very very close to doing so and it's wanted to this originally wanted to be a 21 pop man at arms play with the hunt, although I feel like with the shorefish it could have been even faster. But still, here come the towers, although there is... Uh, okay, now there is man at arms. That's actually very, very late for Dark. He was probably too busy quick calling. But he should be having the third militia out by now because he wants to grab the man at arms upgrade ASAP. Still, it seems like Overtaken wants to go for a drush fast castle here. Which um, may or may not work out. We'll see. Drushfest castles are very, very greedy plays here, and I feel like um, players react fast enough um, to a Drush FC with a towers play to make it very, very hard for you to pull off a uh, Drush FC like this, especially with the militias are running into the TC fire. The militias are running into the TC fire, and it seems like Dark is not reacting. Now he does. Militias eating a lot of damage here, so that basically renders them useless. That was very, very sloppy. Not sure what happened there for Overtaken. I think... I think he wanted to send them back home to defend against this militia or man arms aggression, but that's just not gonna happen. And there's the forward range coming in here. Um, oh boy, Overtaken is just clicking up the feudal age. That's a disaster for him. That's 28 villagers. Britons actually have a pretty nice rush FC because of the sheep gathering bonus. 
but the fact that you are still Dark Age is going to hurt you so much because this is a very fast feudal man at arms play. Japanese man at arms gets through walls very easily, you see how fast those walls are going down. The only problem that Dark is having right now is that he's not on stone, and that means that he can't actually make more, um, more towers. Now, one man at arms runs past the TC and loses his life in the process. As this is gonna be opened up, I wonder if some of the voyagers will actually start mining stone here. There will be archers on the way, as the voyagers, I think, are heading towards the gold mine. The thing is that it's one thing that you deny castellation from your opponent, I don't think that you can do that. What you can do is um, deny gold, so that he can't make archers. Now, truth being told, the rush FC here for overtaken is actually pretty bad. I don't know what he wanted to do with this, but... Uh, it is uh, very, very low on food. In fact, it was like four farms Drush FC without any deer push. So, actually, he did push in two deer, I see now. So, that was the plan. He pushed in two deer and wanted to go for a Drush FC. In that case, that's a little bit better, but not by a massive Ready. margin. And that part side wall foundation is really weak over there, as the Voyagers will not really be able to keep building that. Another tower comes in here for Dark, who is now free on stone, and the tower's aggression is actually starting to materialize pretty nicely. But this tower was too late for Dark. Well, it's not too late for Dark, but it actually is late enough so that um, Overtaken is able to do a counter tower over here. Voyager is not really around the town center to jump inside. I feel like Overtaken or Dark might have even committed to this one, but he just loses under man at arms. So this was a little bit sloppy of a reaction here from... Um, Dark, he did the right thing, it was just the execution that went um, wrong for him, I believe. Anyways, um, that doesn't change the fact that Overtaken is off from a gold for a time being. And in fact, he jumps out of the tower with the Voyagers, not sure what happened. If That might have been unintentional. But the thing is that now his tower is about to go down, and uh, Dark could always repair that tower. He also has a couple of archers inside, which helps immensely. And... Um, Overtaken is not actually close to clicking up to Castlage here. Now, Dark is able to compensate with some um, short fishing and hunting over here, and this is something that we're seeing very frequently on this map. If one player is playing full voice Drush FC, the opponent will compensate um, by going to the outside for the short fish and the hunt, and he's going to be able to catch up in economy. So, that is uh, a tower going down, and it looks like um, there is a massive chaos within the base of Overtaken. Uh, so we are going to have one Voyager dying. Skirmisher now is out, but that is already a very, very disturbing sign for a player that originally wanted to go for a Drush FC. Another tower comes in here. These towers aren't walled in, so technically um, they could be knocked down by Voyagers, but there is Archers supporting all of those, so that's not really going to be an option for Overtaken, who is still very, very far from getting up to Castlage. And many of his farms will be denied as well by towers. Now, truth being told, Dark's food eco isn't impressing me either. In fact, he's got 15 on wood, which feels like a... Bit of an overkill. I think he just sent these voyagers back home, though. He probably collected a bit of a wood from here before sending back home. But anyways, um, we are still having 500 food in the bank for uh, Overtaken. And I really hope that those voyagers aren't going back, because that would be a disaster from Dark. They are going back. Dark actually tests them on this wood line. And he forgot to make a lumber camp. I think he wanted to make a lumber camp, but he forgot. Um, now, at the end of the day, that doesn't really change the fact that Overtaken is still under heavy pressure. But I feel like Dark's food eco should be a lot more well-developed. Like, he should be on farms by now. That's actually a nice quick call from Overtaken. Massive overcommitment from uh, Dark over there. He tried playing this one greedy. Now, he ends up picking off a Voyager, so I guess he gets some value out of this. As now he's adding farms. Um, there is horse color in here for dark. I actually like the fact that he's prioritizing horse color above double bit axe, but he could also afford bit axe here pretty easily for himself. Although with um, 18 on wood, I don't think that he needs it. And look at his opponent. He's still not actually going up to Castlage because he can't. He is just struggling for food now, and it's insanely hard to pile up the food when... Like, he actually has a lot of stone. Might as well make a market and buy yourself up at this rate. Anyways, look at this. That's actually a nice one from Dark. Um, he's actually going to mill the shorefish over there. And he's going to get a nice little boost from that too. And he will soon start catching up in food. And look at this. 
He's actually walling off this side of the gold mine. So even if his opponent actually takes this one down, he's going to be unable to take that gold mine. Dark is in firm control over this one, as uh, it looks like Overtaken wants to kill some of the huntables over here to make it a little bit more annoying for um, Dark, and he does. So, well, those huntables or Ibixes are no longer there for us. But there is still two malicious harassing voyagers. There should be no trouble for uh, Dark finishing these offs. And there is still Shortfish. As Overtaken now is buying himself up using a market, but as you see by this time, Dark is actually catching up too. His eco upgrades are a little bit better, and I think if Dark goes for a market, he could buy himself up too. So, probably sell the stone, go up, and just keep adding archers. Keep in mind that, yeah, the first to click up to Castlage is Overtaken, but he has one military on the field, and that's a single skirmisher. So yeah, he's gonna be beating his opponent into Castlage, but that is going to be completely useless considering that um, he's not gonna have any army working for him. And since there is no army for Overtaken, this tower is uh, probably gonna be a nice attempt from Dark. I think it seems like Overtaken wants a defensive castle though. Like he's very, very heavy on stone. Makes me wonder if we're going to see a castle some round over here to try and take that tower down and maybe even that one as well. And then go for straight Longbowman. Because that kind of seems like that's going to be the scenario. So far, Dark is doing an excellent job denying resources. So, um, skirmishers harassing voyagers on the wood line here. Archers denying the wood line over here. Towers going up as well. And as I said, it's going to be a one minute difference between the two players. But right now, Overtaken is sitting on one skirmisher as his, as his entire army. And here come the voyagers for the castle. It might also come up here to protect the gold mine. We'll see if that's the case. Or we're just gonna have villagers chopping wood over here. Oh, yeah, he doesn't have a castle age just yet. So now that's gonna be a castle, and that castle is gonna be over here on the gold mine. I think he was considering this position as well. But this castle is probably the safest for you at this point. Secure the gold mine that you really, really need. But that means that he's gonna have to play with longbowmen. And at this point, I feel like Dark could just think about overrunning his opponent with superior archer numbers. Because he could go for double range archers and uh, just outnumber his opponent. Or elite skirms could also work out quite nicely into a siege push. You could actually start pushing the eco of your opponent from this side. And just try to corner him within his base. And there come the longbowmen indeed for overtaken. Um, Dark also up to Castle Age over here, uh, doesn't really have enough stone for a forward castle at this point, so he's going to drop multiple TCs instead, one over here on this wood line and probably one over here, close to that gold and close to that wood would be nice. So it looks like Overtaken also wants to break out of his base here, Archers will pick up a couple of Voyagers, Longbows eventually will be nice at cleaning up those archers, however, that's already a lot of vultures dead from Overtaken, and Dark hasn't even teched into Crossbowmen. He could, if these were Crossbowmen, this would be even worse for Overtaken, look at that, another vulture goes down, he's trying to catch these with the longbows, but he kinda soon has to acknowledge that, hey, I'm just gonna lose my vultures, there is Botkin, there is Elite Skirm, and Longbowmen are trying to catch up, but with good micro, you could just kill all these vultures if you are Dark, you already have a 5 vultures lead, as Overtaken now wants to poke down the archers, but as I said, just microwave and take as many voyagers as you can with you. You will lose these archers, it's a matter of how many voyagers you kill here, I think. And that's going to end up, I think that's still about 3, 4, 5 voyagers killed. At the end of the day, Dark killed 11 voyagers, only lost 2 in the process. And uh, we are going to see more and more elite skirms coming in with what is going to be a free TC play. Actually, 4 TC play from Dark, so he's playing this one really, really greedy overall. So Longbow is coming up to the other side. Now Longbow is here. Actually a pretty decent upgrade. They do have Botkin missing uh, Ballistics. So for now Dark is fine but I feel like he needs to be a little... although this is tricky because Dark doesn't actually need to be more aggressive. He can just boom on four TCs because the Britain army is very very slow moving. So that those longbows won't really be able to do much in the upcoming couple of minutes, to be honest. Even if they attack this DC, let's say you can always garrison inside, and as long as there is no siege support, they will not be able to destroy it. 
and the rest of your eco will be just thriving, whereas your opponent, um, the Britain's player, is only on uh, two TCs. Now, that being said, um, Dark only has eight Voyagers on food and 43 on wood, so his eco balance here is actually very, very bad. He needs a lot more farmers, otherwise all of these TCs will be idle. So, he needs to start adding farms like ASAP. In fact, eight farms overall is very, very low, even for early castellage, let alone for... Uh, a 4 TC boom here, so it doesn't matter that you have a 4 TC boom if you can't actually um, keep those TCs working. There is no plus 2 defense on these skirmishers either, as now Dark is adding massive amounts of farming eco for himself, still free on stone. As 3rd TC is coming up for overtaken, he's gonna be close to a stone mine. And now the longbows will start looping around, there is an overchop on uh, this wood line over here. So that could be a place to go in, or... Oh, disaster walling from Dark. Disaster walling. He's lucky that his opponent doesn't have longbow or um, doesn't have ballistics. Otherwise, this would be more Voyager kills. But still, that's uh, two wheels picked off. Nice one from Overtaken. Ballistics is just coming in for uh, Dark, though. But you have to keep in mind that since those skirms do not have plus two defense, they're not super tanky. And the Britain longbows do have a very good range to just out micro them, so to say. The two players are actually pretty close in terms of geographical locations. So Overtaken is Estonian and Dark is Russian, which means that they are probably playing in a loping environment, making um, the Longbow Micro much, much easier as compared to being forced to play with high ping against a player that's much more far away uh, in terms of physical location. Anyways, once plus two defense comes in, this should be no trouble for... Uh, Dark to handle, although you have to keep in mind that Dark has one range making skirms, whereas his opponent is now getting to dangerous longbow numbers. Is Dark going to throw this game away here? Because even though his 4 TC is booming, his opponent is on 3 TCs and Dark only has an 8 Voyager's lead and now adding additional ranges. But you really have to ask the question if that is in time because that feels very, very late. I understand he wanted to go for elite skirms, but that should have actually happened a long time ago. Because he was on one range for so, so long, and he went for four TCs for nothing, because he didn't really have the eco to make them working anyways. And one of the ranges are on the front, so pulling back units from that is actually pretty challenging as well. Uh, two more ranges coming up uh, at home to get a couple of skirms out on the field. One of them might actually go denied, though, and that would once again be a disaster for Dark. Don't tell me that Dark is throwing this game away, because he should be having a massive control over this one. But he really does not, and I think part of that can be associated with the fact that um, he sort of misplayed this early castellation. There was very, very few things that um, he had on the field in terms of military. He had a couple of arches and a couple of skirms, but it's not like he actually committed a lot to uh, his military. And the thing is that he didn't even boom really well either, to be honest. So, yeah, he was... Uh, he was 4 TCs, but at the end of the day, he has a uh, 9 Voyager's lead over his opponent. And uh, behind this one, he doesn't really have an uh, army to clean these longbows up, and the longbow numbers will just keep increasing and increasing. And uh, if Overtaken gets ballistics for himself, which is something that he now does, um, he can actually start picking Voyagers off from insane ranges. It's already 8th um, range, and you could actually get Yeoman, which is the Castlage unique tech for Britons, that will actually give you 2 more range, I believe. So that will be 10 range longbows. And Yeoman isn't really expensive either, if I'm not mistaken. So that would definitely be something that uh, gets considered for Overtaken, who has at 15 longbows. Now, his opponent is getting his skirm numbers up high. So soon, those longbows will not be as efficient as they could potentially have been before, as the skirmishers actually launch a counterattack. They might try taking these longbows out, as uh, since this... Blacksmith was under attack by Overtaken. Dark knows that these longbows are here and he might actually try intercepting them. Anyway, scale barning on the way for Overtaken, so he's tacking into what's probably gonna be Light Cav eventually to try and deal with the pure skirmisher play of his opponent. So, skirmishers will actually see the stables. And we're gonna have knights, as there is gonna be another castle coming in here for Overtaken. This will protect the far right side of his eco, so that is definitely a positive. There is still just a 10 Voyager's lead for uh, Dark, although he does have Boso, which actually adds a little bit of an extra eco for him. The Siege Workshop didn't really do much on the left side, 
Uh, but now there is Rams on the way for Overtaken, so he's taking down these uh, towers, which is important because he wants to reclaim uh, this gold mine potentially take down this range and secure that gold mine for himself. Now there is a Knights on the field, and uh, it seems like Dark is a little bit unprepared to fight for against them because um, he only has a skirms on the field and well, one man at arms and one scout, but that doesn't really count. So a couple more ranges coming in here for a Dark 51 on food though. That would be an insanely fast Imperial, if he just idles his production buildings for a moment, 51 on food would just prop a youth Imperial in 5 seconds. If you take a look at that food count rising, that's absolutely crazy. You could really make a case for starting to mix in Arbalest then, if you are beating your opponent to Imperial. Dark is not on stone, which means that a defensive castle here for him is not an option. That also is hurting him, because uh, that would make it much harder for him to make a trap push if he beats his opponent to Imperial. And I feel like he's aspiring to beat his opponent into Imperial here, because uh, he is getting very, very close to clicking up, whereas his opponent does not. So we'll see if this Castle Age push is actually going to be enough for Overtaken, because he doesn't really have a lot of uh, upgrades on those Knights, and that's a lot of Skirmishers. And yeah, Knights soak up a lot of uh, arrow fire. but the problem that the Overtaken is facing is that just stalling out a fight like that isn't enough. He needs to be actively pushing his opponent. Otherwise, his opponent is just going to beat him into Imperial. Now, 15 on stone for Dark, so he definitely wants a castle for himself. Um, for Dark, I think he knows about the castle on the right side, and he indeed does. Which makes me wonder if you're seeing the castle over here coming up. To try and trap that one down. Plus two defense on the way for Overtaken, so those knights actually will start becoming scarier and scarier. And we'll see what the late game unit comp is for Dark. But I don't see any any tech switch happening so it might just be full elite skirm which could be concerning because even though britain cavalry isn't amazing it's actually surprisingly decent so it is satisfactory enough to deal with skirmishers that's for sure although that's a lot of skirms that's a lot of skirms and the knights are going down so the longbows could actually be in trouble and remember that if overtaken is not actually pushing this one overtaken gonna be is gonna be in trouble and with 54 on food, for Dark, you can really make a case for potentially establishing stables here with these Voyagers. Get stables in and start trading with Light Cap. Japanese Light Cap is actually pretty bad because they're missing the plus 4 defense upgrade. They do have plus 4 attack and I think they're missing... Uh, I'm not sure if they're missing Bloodlines. They might be. But regardless of that, against an Archer Civilization, even must missing plus 4 defense is gonna hurt. But you could make a case for Light Cavs. So that you can actually start trading your opponent's eco, because you definitely have the food eco to um, mass add light cavalry. Now that's a lot of knights coming in here from Overtaken. Dark, it seems like he's actually going to try and focus down the arbs, or the longbows, here. Castle versus counter castle coming in here, so it seems like this is a very, very common sign, and uh, it is enough knights to push over Dark back, and... Yes, he's an Imperial, sure, but he doesn't have this castle. In fact, that castle is not going to go up at all. And now Overtaken knows that he needs to get into Imperial himself as well. Now, if Bracer comes in here as Partian Tactics... Partian Tactics does not do anything to your Skirmishers, in case you haven't known. With Chemistry and Bracer, those Skirmishers will once again be a little bit more efficient against the Knights, but still, obviously, Skirm versus Knights is definitely not something that you want to see on a frequent basis. And... Um, it is now 10 army against 29. The castle is up, and that means that the Dark needs to start adding traps here ASAP for himself. But as you see, Overtaken is already adding eco, or um, already adding resources for um, Imperial himself. And it's still 30 uh, army against just 10. And there is still no traps here for Overtaken, which is hurting him really badly. Cav Archer switch. Now, for a moment, I thought that uh, that uh, Spartan Tactics was just a mistake from uh, Dark, but. Surprisingly, Japanese Cav Archers are actually pretty decent. I think they might even be fully upgraded. They do have Thumb Ring, they do have... I'm not sure about plus 4 defense, but... Okay, they do have plus 4 defense. They do have Bracer, do have Thumb Ring. They do have Partian. I think they also have Bloodlines, right? I'm not 100% sure. A couple of Knights breaking into the base of Dark End. Honestly, um, the Cav Archers would be a nice decision here. The thing I do not like is that he's still not trapping this castle down. He should be trapping this castle down like for a long, long, long time because he eventually was just gonna get beaten in a trap war. This is one of the rare, well, the only civilization matchup where we could see Karaparuto traps versus Warwolf traps, two of the best traps in the game. 
I think there is uh, three civilizations. Actually, no, there is more. But there's only a few civilizations that have uh, trebuchet-related bonuses, like Japanese. They do have the unique tech working for them, staying for Britons. Um, Huns have a trebuchet-related bonus with the uh, more accuracy. Then Chaos with a firing grade bonus, and I think that's all, if I'm not mistaken. Now it's more and more light cap coming in here for Overtaken as Dark commits to this push. And one thing that we didn't notice is that this castle here would deny two gold mines, and it's not like uh, Overtaken has an awful lot of gold by any means. Another castle comes in here to secure this position, and imagine if the trap came out earlier. He would already be pushing this one down, and Overtaken is still not going up to an Imperial, which is buying an awful lot of time for Dark here. In fact, Dark should be going for multiple traps here. He could be just absolutely annihilating castles. I'm not sure why he's not doing it. He's floating a lot of food, not really using uh, it to get gold. Now sells quite a lot. And now come more traps. Lightcap will try diving in, but these Lightcap only have a plus two defense, so the castle is gonna quickly deal with them. As Skirmisher is now trying to deny gold here. And let's see where Overtaken is getting his gold from. It's very, very limited map control. That's basically the only gold mine that he has, like, a very, very convincing control of. And now Overtaken is pulling Voyager to repair that uh, castle. Um, let's see if we're going to have traps here as well from Dark. He could definitely open up a new front line. He went for heavy CA, and we're even seeing a Japanese samurai on the way. Fun fact, I think longbows and samurai are pretty much counters to each other. In close combat, samurai should be eating longbows because of the bonus damage against uh, unique units, but obviously longbows eat samurai in most instances. So, on paper they're actually countering each other, in reality longbows actually just eat um, the samurai anyways. Uh, that is a castle that is going down. The skirmishers could be diverted over here now to clean up these longbows. And that would allow Dark to actually get the castle up over here. In fact, a second castle of his got denied temporarily. And Slight Caps are trying to do some more raiding. Now it is still a mixture of Cav Archers and Elite Skirm, but it's 200 pop against 145. And as I said, Imperial Age is just coming in here for Overtaken. He's using... Which DC is he using for Imp? He's using this one, okay. In that case, that's fine. That's actually the TC that uh, you have to use in this situation. Second castle is up, and soon those traps will start moving and trying to take down the third one. Another castle here as well. I think this is not on a hill, but it doesn't really matter as it's targeting um, the castle. And remember that one thing that Overtaken doesn't have is good production if he loses his castles. So he's almost exclusively Longbowman, and that means that... Uh, he isn't really gonna have the chance to replace his army if he loses his castles. And Longbowman actually struggle quite badly killing those uh, traps. So the skirmishers will actually be able to take the hill here. Another castle is going to be exposed to the trap fire. This is a little bit of a premature engagement here for Dark, but he's willing to commit to this one and pick off a couple of villagers. Dark is in the firm control over this game. And indeed, one second before reaching Imperial, Overtaken taps out Dark. 2-0 lead here. Pretty convincing. So far, Overtaken has been playing really standard. So we haven't seen any of those more aggro plays from him so far. And he's not playing bad, he's actually playing pretty decent. It's about uh, Dark um, being quite well prepared to answer what uh, Overtaken is doing. So um, he saw that this is a Drush FC, reacted to the Manet Arms play, was well prepared. Um, Japanese pick I think is a, a lot better than the Britain's pick here as well. And uh, now we will be going for Overtaken's other's home map which is going to be Cross. All right, let's get into this game over here. Welcome to Four Lakes, also known as Cross. We're going to have another water sift for Dark over here, a very surprising Italians, to be honest. I didn't expect that one to be pulled over here because I feel like this sieve is just way too slow for this map. Other side is going to be a Mayans for Overtaken, so two very unconventional and sort of subpar civilizations for this map. Um, this is Overtaken's tournament life on the line, so um, he's gonna have to bring in everything he's got over here. I wonder what he's planning with Mayans, but I feel like it's, it's not going to be related to, you know, actually fighting a lot for the pawns. It's going to be like, okay, I have a strong gameplay with Mayans on Arabia, and I will try to adapt that... Um, to this map or something that's relatable so he's gonna go for a fish i'm sure but it's probably going to be more about the land push over here other side dark with italian is not a civilization i love a lot to be honest um for this map it is just uh eh. 
The cheaper fishing ships definitely help, but it's too slow moving. It's a little one dimensional to my taste as overtaken takes away one goose over here. Two villagers going out for a pond from uh, dark as he's already getting the fishing ships in. Obviously, Italians is not a bad civ here, but I feel like there are way better civilizations. If you want to play a, a slow civ like um, potentially Malay, then that's probably better. Japanese is better here. Byzantines is probably better as well. And remember that Dark actually took all the possible water civs basically in this um, draft. As we are going to have uh, a relatively fast feudal over here from Dark, but no land military. In fact, what he's doing is walling off his base and just going for the other pond. Uh, he's trying to sneak a villager up on uh, his opponent, but overtaken in the meanwhile, I wonder if that's a fast castle, because that really seems like a fast castle over here for me, as a dog is uh, coming in from dark. Since overtaken was late into feudal age, because he's playing a fast castle, as he tries to trap a villager um, over here. So since overtaken um, was uh, late, that means that he couldn't make a galley. If he just played standard um, galley play or standard uh, water play, he could have been able to make a galley. Now, that villager is actually very low HP, so the fire galley should be able to finish this guy off. And uh, it's actually burning the wall. And now the villager is dead. This is actually extremely important because there is no repair villagers here for Dark. So what Dark wanted to do is secure his own pond, which is fine. Um, and also go for uh, the other pond over here so he's actually having a crazy fishing eco and in fact he's going to click up to castle age basically at the same time as his opponent what a gameplay what a gameplay this was a very very passive uh fuel age from both players and it seems like both of them actually want to go for a fast castle here um naked fast castle for overtaken support by fish into direct plumed archers is the plan um, whereas on the other side, the Dark is going for Fast Castle himself, but Fast Castle into what? And we have to keep in mind that Italians aren't amazing in Castle Age against Mayans. In fact, Mayans just destroy Italians in Castle Age. In Imperial, I would say that Conda Theory Hand Cannon could be a composition that could be a little bit tough for um, Mayans to handle, but I feel like um, I just feel that the Mayan land army is a lot more natural than the Italian is. That being said, there is a two villagers lead right now for Dark, who is going to be on three pawns, whereas his opponent is only playing on one. In fact, that one pawn is under heavy pressure as well. Overtaken should be able to win the water here, though, as I said, because uh, he has a repair villager. He could actually keep his um, fire galleys alive, which is not going to happen for this particular one. But this is going to be one that goes down. So, as I said, Overtaken is going to be able to secure his fishing eco. Um, well, Dark is not giving up on this one, he wants to keep pushing this, and considering that Dark doesn't didn't make a single bit of land army, you could make a case for potentially even trying a castle drop. Oh, that's gonna be the plan. I don't think that when T90 actually put Cross into the map pool, he imagined it this way, that uh, we're seeing a Maya naked fast castle into castle drop plumed archers. Um, Overtaken isn't shying away from uh, going for some very, very aggro unconventional strategies and that is exactly what he's doing over here this is actually very sloppy from dark he needs to reposition those uh fishing ships on deep fish because fishing ships are gathering very slow from shore fish so you want them on deep fish and by the time that stable goes up i feel like uh, there is actually gonna be a castle it's worth pointing out that the castle times are like near identical and the fishing eco of dark is gonna be great but his knights won't really be able to do much against the base of Overtaken. And more importantly, there's gonna be a castle right in his face. Oh, Dark is probably like, okay, what do I do against that? Because he won't be able to do much. I feel like, as weird as it sounds, like this might be a game over here. Because that castle is gonna be able to destroy all the resistance over here. And the knights won't really be able to do much against the plumed archers. So yeah, there is knights coming. I don't think that that tower goes up in time. If this castle goes up, I feel like that's a game for Overtaken. And you, you can see that Dark knows that as well. Dark knows exactly that castle goes up, and that's a game over here for him. And I don't think that he can actually stop this one, even though... It goes up. It goes up. And now, I feel like Dark is dead. Because that stable is going to go down, plumed archers will be coming in. And the thing is that the fishing eco of Overtaken is still safe, so it's not like he is actually in the immediate danger of losing that. Obviously, the eco for Dark is a little stronger. However, 
you have to consider that Overtaken is going to be able to push him on land really, really easily. In fact, he could threaten the gold mine with a couple of plume archers. The plumes don't only have fletching in this one, as that's a siege workshop. With such a um, castle position, you actually make a ram here and try ramming down that TC, because the voyagers won't be able to jump out and kill that ram, because it is within range of the town center. So the first ram that comes out actually ends that town center's life. In the meanwhile, um, as the knights are trying to jump out, they will immediately be greeted by a castle fire. This game feels very, very over <laughs> for Dark. Um, it, it's hard to say much about that. By the way, those plume archers could commit to this because the town center is as if it is, wasn't even there. So there is no voyagers to garrison. You can just commit five plume archers, run in here, and it's minus 10 voyagers for Dark. Um, there is apparently a counterattack here. In fact, um, Overtaken is going to lose his fishing eco. So his food eco isn't amazing, but he's committing 14 voyagers on stone. He isn't stopping here. He isn't going to stop at uh, at one castle. He's going to drop another one, possibly around over here. And the idea would be that you deny the starting gold of your opponent, and then you can just run around with the plume archers and try to look for voyagers trying to get uh, gold for themselves. There is going to be a monastery to try and deal with the knights that are coming this way. Bloodlines just coming in for um, Dark, and this Overtaken is much more reminiscent to the one that we have seen uh, in the previous round of the qualifiers. So very, very aggressive, super aggro strategies from him, and a TC is down, and let's see if we are seeing the Voyagers getting the castle up some round over here, because I feel like that's the plan. So all four pawns will be in the hands of uh, Dark, and he does have a 7 of Voyagers lead. The only problem that he's facing right now is that he's gonna get absolutely slaughtered because he's gonna have nowhere to go. So, Manganol comes in right now. I think he wants to secure a bit of a ground until, uh, or before he moves in with the Voyagers to drop a castle. An alternative would be to drop a castle here. Because that would deny escape from the base this direction, would deny the Golden Stone, and you could just control the rest of the map with the Plumed Archers, and what you could do is just corner your opponent within here. That is actually going to be a Mango Dance Commercing. Um, you could make a case for targeting this side wall with the castle, trying to get a couple of plumed archers um, into the wood line from this side, or just go for the house as well. You have a castle fire that helps you. That's definitely something that you should consider. I don't, don't think that the castle fire is actually targeting, uh, or I don't think that Overtaker is actually controlling that castle fire manually. You always have to retask your castle to shoot uh, whatever you told them to. Um, after a single unit was made by the castle, unless they fix that thing that should still be like that. Anyways, knights aren't getting in here, and also, uh, speaking of anyways, I noticed that some people are saying that I'm saying anyways too much. It happens. It happens, you know. Um, I was actually trying to look for synonyms, so... Um, Google said that instead of anyways, I could say at any rate, or um, nevertheless is a good replacement word. So today we're learning a new word, and that's going to be nevertheless. Um, well, it's not a new word, but I never used that before. Um, so another castle comes in here to cut off the um, escape to the south, deny that gold mine over there. And uh, during this, you got the Dark moving out with a new TC. Uh, on the north for the other gold mine. I don't know if uh, Overtaken knows about that one. He does not. He knows about this gold mine, but he doesn't know about this one, although it wouldn't really be um, difficult for him to explore that. It is a 55 to 50 Voyager's uh, count, though, and now I see what Dark is planning to do, and that's actually smart. He's stalling this push out, and he's waiting until he can click into Imperial. The only problem that he's facing currently is that he doesn't have a town center. He actually doesn't have a town center, and that is a problem. He wants to click into Imperial, make a castle and trap this down, which is a nice concept, but last time I checked you need an actual town center to click into Imperial, and that's not something that he has. So that might have been a little too bold, and <laughs> he is actually trying to go into Imperial. Um, now goes for defensive castle here, but that I think already is a disaster. Um, because now the plumed archers will hug the face of the Manganoles, two plumes go down over here, followed by potentially three more. But if the Manganoles go down here, I feel like that's uh, the end of the story here. Uh, the ground attack almost got the other Mangano. I have to say that um, Dark's defense here was actually pretty convincing, and the castle is definitely going up. And Overtaken is not close to Imperial, so Dark might actually turtle this one out. He's seven Voyagers behind, but his resources are good enough to click into Imperial, trap these castles down. 
The only problem that he's facing is that he doesn't actually have a town center to take into Imperial. There's a new one coming up here as well, so we'll see which one is the one that is going to be used for imping. I think you have to use this one, because this castle is going to be very, very, very short-lived. Um, or is it? I thought that the castle is going to go up, but I might have spoken too soon, because... Um, it seems like it's a little bit unlikely Mangonel's trying to dive in on the Mangonel, and that's gonna be two knights down for nothing. Imperial Age coming in here on this TC, this is dangerous because if somehow a castle goes up here, then you could lose that TC before you get to Imperial. And that being said, um, now Plume Darts just taking the hill over here, uh, overtaken, trying to micro against the Mangonel. One Mango goes down, uh, a second Mangonel goes down. And the third Mangonel also gets out micro. Very, very nice unit control here by uh, Overtaken. And so once again, he splits away from the Mangonel shot. Uh, Plume Darchers are slowly going down, but obviously, um, considering how cheap Plume Darchers aren't, how expensive Mangonels are, these are actually fairly cost efficient engagements for Overtaken, who is sixth on food. So he can keep making Voyagers, but that's basically all that he can do with his food. He's very heavy on gold, though, so he might actually think about. Um, maybe imping himself, but in that case, he would be doing that using uh, the market very, very heavily. So, TC at 50% towards Imperial, and have I mentioned that that TC is very, very exposed? That Mangonel is even misplaced by Overtaken? As he wants to go into Imperial himself, that Mango should be on top of this hill, and that would be like twice the damage. And you see that Dark is already pulling Voyager's Repair. I think Overtaken also knows that his opponent wants to up into Imperial. That could be another TC that gets intercepted, and this is just a never-ending nightmare for Dark. This is one of the reasons why Overtaken got into this round, and this is why he's surprising many players, because he's super aggressive. He's a very, very aggressive player, and you see that um, Dark is gonna get to Imperial, but he's gonna have one castles against three, and his opponent is going up to Imp as well in a matter of moments, with three villagers only on food. Still, Technically, the eco lead is in the hands of Overtaken, as uh, it seems like we're gonna have a couple of plumed archers. The idea here was that the plumed archer is going to harass the fishing ships, but the galley is gonna be able to clean that one up. Soon, the pawns start running out of fish, so Dark is gonna have to start adding fish traps, which will be tougher than it looks like because he doesn't really have an awful lot of wood income. He's got nine villagers on wood, and that is all. Um, the TC is still standing, and there's going to be an immediate trap coming in here from Dark. Now he could actually start thinking about Condottieri against the Plumed Archers, although those guys still need the armor upgrades to be good against Plumes, because they're not really meant as an anti-archer unit, they're more like meant against an anti gunpowder unit, so... 150 away from Imperial is overtaken with 0 on food and 0 on wood. Definitely not an eco-balance that um, I love, to be honest. But still, he's got the better army, if you think about it. So... As weird as it sounds like, with all the wacky and massy eco of Overtaken, he's got 20 plumes on the field, and that's not something that his opponent really has an answer for, and sure, there will be a trap being set up, but it takes so much time to kill all three of these castles. And uh, Overtaken, it seems like he's gonna be pushed here by a couple of knights. There is two conversions from him, so he's not going to lose an awful lot of villagers. A couple of them will still go down, but he will survive with um, minor casualties. Let's say, um, and now we're seeing him selling stone. He is just casually zero fooding this one. As uh, one of his castles might actually go down here, although I think he will try diving in with the plume dodges and trying to snap down that trap. Is far enough for that castle to be a potentially successful option. Indeed, Dark knows that hey, my trap is completely exposed here and I have to save it. So his castle stays up and immediately after overtaken starts making traps on multiple castles. Um, with a clear intention to take this only defensive castle up from his opponent. There is another castle on the way for Dark at this position, but I feel like three castles already over here um, from Overtaken, with the chance to just get four or five traps out and start steamrolling his buildings is huge. Um, and Dark is trying to expand as much as possible, so um, he's getting pushed in the middle, he's expanding to the sides. He can only expand to the north though, because the south is pretty much locked away with castles, but that's already sort of enough for him to buy himself some time. There is no bracer on these plumed archers right now because Overtaken's economy isn't really suitable for uh, squeezing in an upgrade like Bracer. So, um, another castle comes in here. This castle is going to be history most likely very, very soon. Um, I don't think that um, this is something that Dark can or even wants to keep alive. 
That being said, if those plume darts get in here, that's gonna be potentially nine another Voyager is dead. Manganol is being split away by the plume darts. Those plumes still don't have bracers, so they're not amazing at killing manganols. But now the castle is up, and that's something that is gonna be spotted immediately by Overtaken, which means that he can actually get the traps in and start rolling towards the opponent's base. And Dark caused the GG, so. In the first two games, Overtaken was playing very, very standard. Now he goes for the much more aggressive play um, that was much more reminiscent to what we have seen from him in uh, the previous round. And... Uh... Yeah, that is uh, basically it. We will have uh, game number four coming in here on the first home map of Dark. So, that's Islands and Bay available for him as a home map. Alright, so let's take a quick look at the draft over here. We are going to have uh, Overtaken losing uh, Mayans. He, this was his first pick, so it seems like he has pre-planned this aggression the whole time. And on the other side, we are gonna have uh, Dark losing Italians, a sieve that I didn't really like for this map, to be honest, and um, I don't think it represented, like, this game didn't represent why I didn't like Italians for this map, but uh, it did represent why Overtaken got into the second round, and honestly, Thinking about the Slopes game now, I feel like um, the reason why it didn't work out, I think he might have wanted to try something very similar in terms of playstyle. So, Eldrash FC, once again, just trying to get to the Castage power spike and then go for an aggressive push that way. But that was countered quite nicely by uh, Dark, reacted to it with the Man at Arms and then delayed that Castage so, so much. Anyways, uh, we are going to have uh, Islands coming in here as uh, the first home map of Dark as uh, there is an attempt from Overtaken to mount a comeback. So we are uh, coming in onto Islands and Overtaken is uh, picking a very, very, very interesting water civilization over here. Um, the Battle of the no Neighbors, so to say, at least in geographical terms. Portuguese for Dark in green, which is very standard. Spanish for Overtaken in blue. Now, historically, Spanish are known for their fleets, the Grand Spanish Armada. And I think that the Spanish uh, Navy in this game is actually pretty, like, it's alright in terms of upgrades. It is a completely alright um, Navy, I think. They have Bracer, they have Galleon, they, I think... I will have to double check, in fact, while you are seeing this uh, sort of fast-forwarded position um, in the Dark Age. I'm going to double check within the game. But, um, yeah, the Spanish have a fully upgraded dock. So, Elite Cannon get an available Fast Fire, Heavy Demo, Galleon, Dry Dock, Shipwright with Bracer. Uh, so, um, they, they have everything that they need for water. It's about the fact that they don't have any water-specific bonuses that would... Uh, potentially give them an upper edge or upper hand over uh, an opponent. In fact, I would love to see if Spanish had some sort of water-related bonus, um, because uh, historically that would fit very, very nicely into this sieve. I feel like, however, Spanish already are quite strong civilization, so that's probably the reason why they don't have anything like that. So, yeah, Spanish is a generally very, very good all-purpose civilization. Um, it is good for islands, but you have to consider Portuguese much, much better if you just talk about pure islands play. But obviously, talking about Overtaken, this is something different. And this is going to be a backdock fast castle into Conquistador Landing, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see what Dark can do to battle that. It seems like he's just playing... Oh, he's landing. I think he knows exactly that it's going to be a fast castle Conquistador Landing. And the biggest problem with Spanish... Uh, on this map, I think, is that it's it's just so, so unpredictable or so, so predictable that you're going for a fast castle play like this. And one of the ways you can actually battle landing like that is by landing yourself. Dark is going to pop um, the Voyager out of that transport. So, here's the deal. There is Market Blacksmith and... Uh, <laughs> Well, Dark apparently will be noticed by Overtaken here, who doesn't have Loom, by the way, so this is a super greedy Flask Castle. 
by uh, Overtaken, who is now making a front dock with a clear effort to try and transport um, his uh, conquistor. So the question is, if you're actually landing the opponent and making the castle there, or you're making it home and you're just transporting the conquistors around, there's a tower coming up here, which... Don't tell me it's... Oh my goodness! Overtaken has no idea! He has no idea. Now he sees the power side walls, but it's too late. Although it, it might not be too late. It's single vulture, and you can just run down the power side wall with vultures. So Overtaken could still react to this one very, very easily. He could even make a counter tower. Now he kind of needs that stone mine. The other stone mine is accessible, but you would have to delay your push here. And I think it's only one vulture. You just rush it down. Um, ideally, you actually. Oh, he's, he's bailing out. He could just be knocking down that house. It's one vulture, which means. That if you attack that house, that's very low HP. The Voyager is going to have to be um, repairing that house. And that means it can build a tower. If there was two Voyagers, you could finish the tower and repair at the same time. One Voyager can do that. So, um, Overtaken could have stopped this without any further concerns. And as I said, this is going to delay his uh, progression towards the castle um, by a considerable margin. And look at this. His opponent is also going to cast Lage here. Both players uh, had the fishing eco working for them. But that is no longer the case for Overtaken. And uh, it seems like we are going to have uh, a massive eco lead for Dark over here. He already transported the scout through, so um, it's not even like it's not even remotely a mystery for Dark what his opponent is going to do. Overtaken already is out there with the four Voyagers on. But four Voyagers for a castle might not even be enough, man. This could end up being a disaster. Oh, here is more. Okay, here is more. Um, this is usually not the way how islands play out, I have to say this. And look at this, the Fire Galley is helping out against the Vultures. Fire Galley is seeing the transport, but it's going to be late reacting. Now, if that transport is sunk... Another transport! Double transport play! <laughs> this is how the Spanish in real life imagined the invasion of Britain with the Grand Armada, but that failed. And... Uh, okay, the transport dropped off the watchers before uh, it died. So currently, as things stand, Overtaken does have 14 watchers on the opponent's island. The problem is that at this very moment, Dark has uh, 27 watchers on his own island. And that's exactly what you have to do in this situation. You know that your opponent has sent everything he's got to land here and drop a castle. That's, that's the entire concept. You land with all these watchers, and I think Dark is doing the right thing. Oh, here's the castle. Now, if this castle goes up, Dark is going to be in trouble. But there's a big, 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 big if here. And I think that this castle isn't going up. And if that castle isn't going up, Overtaken is out of the tournament. He definitely brings us some uh, very, very aggro plays here. Like, this, this is not just simply an aggressive gameplay. This is full YOLO gameplay, what you're actually experiencing over here. This... Okay, I'm gonna transport 15 Voyagers for a castle drop type of a play. And I think the GG is gonna be called in 3, 2, 1 because that castle isn't going up. And at this very moment, Overtaken will be sitting on something like 19 Voyagers. Is he making a new... Tra He's making a new transport. He wants that castle up. If you are dark right now, you don't just leave it here. Don't just leave it here, man, because your opponent might actually sneak it up on you. Although Overtaken cancels it. Um, it would have been better for Overtaken, honestly, if he tries to sneak that castle. Now, Dark knows exactly who he is up against, so he has uh, outposted. Is there a word like that? Now there is, I guess. So he has placed outposts all over the island, uh, houses as well, to make sure that he sees any kind of landing. But I feel like um, the tricky thing here is that if you just land here with a castle, um, what Dark is going to do is stonewall himself and your conquistors will not get in. And I think that that was a transport ship that was sunk. I'm not sure if there were Voyagers inside. I don't think there were because there's still 18 Voyagers for uh, Overtaken. But, oh man, that was that was entertaining. Um, it kind of it kind of felt like how should I put this? Like this is the type of play I myself would try if I was up against a much 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 better better player. So I don't know if. For whatever reason, I would actually get matched up against a Viper in a tournament, which will never happen. But in the theoretical scenario, I would try something you like this because I would say, okay, there is no way I win standard. So I have to try something super crazy to make it happen. This is not just aggressive play. This was full on YOLO. He tried it. Um, 
in the first two games he tried playing stand dance. Surprisingly, he played very well in these. So um, you see that he's still a skilled player, but um, the result, the only win that he got came from that massive YOLO as well on four lakes. The concept of the two games were actually very similar if you think about that. So cross um, fast castle aided by a fish boom into castle drop uh, plumed archers here. Fast castle aim aided by fishing ships into a castle drop conquistadors. The problem is that this is much, much harder to pull off on islands. And I would be tempted to say that one of the reasons why Dark chose um, islands as his home map is because he was expecting aggro strategies like this. With that, Overtaken is out, but he definitely delivered uh, a couple of interesting games for us. And Dark gets into the next round of the Hidden Cup for qualifiers just one series away from qualifying to the main event and uh, participating in his first Hidden Cup for a player that is uh, at maximum 16 years old. That's actually sort of a career moment so far. Even if he's not going to qualify, he's going to be very close to that. But if Dark qualifies, that's going to be an enormous moment in his life. And he has been improving very consistently over time. And uh, I think he was voted as one of the most improved players of the last year as well. And personally, I am also really keen on seeing his improvement and progression because I feel like um, Salts did an excellent job picking up very, very young and talented players uh, to their roster. But if Dark wouldn't have a team right now, and I was an esports organization trying to find players for uh, an AoE 2 team, Dark would actually be on my radar because... Uh, his improvement is unquestionable, and uh, as I said, he's one set away from getting into the main event of Hidden Cup and be among the 16 players fighting for $60,000 prize pool.